Hi, my name is Yakira Levi, publisher for Wide View Publishing. Wide View Publishing is a leader in both music and literary publishing. We publish books, music, and media. These are some of the books that we've published so far, and our most recent publication is Trust, Classroom Management, Time to Rebuild Understanding Between Students and Teachers. Today, we will sit down and talk with some of the authors of the book. There are four authors, Marcella Graves, Jamila Kareem, April Weaver, and Michelle Yisrael. April Weaver cannot join us today, but we do have the other authors on hand. Good evening. My name is Jamila Kareem, and I'm a retired educator from CPS and the Alternative School Networks. It's been a delight and a pleasure for me to be able to interact with students. I am the mother of six biological children and six children that have accompanied me through my journey and my learning process. I have been a midwife. I've been a sister, a friend, a traveler. I've just enjoyed my life and I like to share what I'm doing with others. This book has allowed us an avenue to do just that. Uh, Sister Amira and Sister Aquila and Sister April, we have been friends for many, many, many moons. Many moons. Uh, <laughs> I've delivered a few of their children we have worked in variety of settings, and we've been blessed for our lives to keep intersecting with each other. And my name is Michelle Yisrael. Uh, everybody calls me Amira, and I don't mind either. Um, I have five children of my own, and several that were always at my house, <laughs> so they like mine also. Uh, I have been in education since I was 19. That was about 1978. So I, I, and I've taught every level of education ever since then. Right, right now, I am assistant professor of English, composition, and literature at uh, Kennedy King College. I love my job. I love what I do. Uh, I love, I love um, uh, growing and collaborating with other educators. I learn from my students every day. Um, and if you hear someone call me Amira like Jamila just did, that's me, Michelle. <laughs> Amira, hi. Um, I'm known as Aquila, though Marcella Graves is uh, my birth name my legal name, but Aquila is my most affectionate name and I'm well known, perhaps more so as that. Um, I'm also a retired teacher. I've taught in the CPS systems for over 20 years. Uh, I completed bachelor's degree, master's, uh, type 75, and EDS. Uh, degrees. I've been a teacher, you know, I think we're all teachers. I think we come, we've been teachers probably since from the womb, mm -hmm. you know, so teachers are definitely teachers from classroom settings, but, you know, our uh, uh, experiences began long before we were actual teachers in the classroom. Yes. And so um, I have six children, um, host of grandchildren, and as along with uh, Jamila, also a midwife, um, doctor, lawyer, that's the little <laughs> cliche. <laughs> um, I have a passion, as do my cohorts, for the education of our children. And it's a real um, big uh, piece for us because we've seen a lot through the years, as Jamila says, between the four of us, Jamila, Michelle, April, and myself, we have over 100 years 
of educational experiences, uh, pedagogies, uh, strategies, the whole nine yards. And so we've seen a lot through the years. So um, we've worked together not only in the educational settings inside of the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we um, are, have been community activists. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have served, believe we have tried and feel that we have served our communities through the years. Uh, and this uh, new endeavor is only an extension uh, trust of what we've done. It's only an extension of what, um, what our vision, our dreams, and our hopes are, not only for our children, but for our community, mm -hmm. and in the long run for society. So we're glad to be here, you know, and we're glad to be given a voice by Yakira uh, to um, say, you know, and to invite you all into our world, uh, you know, to share with us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. um, we're called Urban EDU Coach, and it just so happened maybe, uh, uh, maybe eight years ago, um, there were six of us at the time, and we all had our own businesses. Mine was Urban EDU Coach, and we were doing things together, consulting together, and as a collective of six people, we called ourselves EDU Innovators. But since that time, you know, things have happened in life. But life yes. has happened. And nobody was able to keep their website going except for me. It's because I'm a workaholic and I don't have anything to do anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> once we actually wrote the book and it happened, it, it was not accidental, but... Uh, it wasn't a plan. We decided that, you know, we, we put our work aside, our work that we did together aside, and some of the things that were going on in our individual lives had, had stopped, and we wanted to continue the work. Uh, so we just started writing, mm -hmm. because we didn't know what direction the work was going was in at the time. Yeah. So we, and we were all over the place. Um, April somewhere else. Jamila was in Los Angeles. Uh, Aquila was in Los Angeles. And so we would just, every evening, we would go in a Google Doc. Everybody be on their phones in a Google Doc. And, and we just write. We fussed a little bit. Actually, we fussed a lot. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> but it worked out <laughs> because our vision was the same. Yeah. Uh, our vision is to empower educators and anybody who works with our young people to help them succeed, we know how to do that. Right. We've done that in different areas, in different places. Um, I have been a principal. I owned my own school for 17 years. I homeschooled my uh, children. People found out about it, and next, the next thing I knew, I had 12 young people up, 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 up on my enclosed back porch. And so a couple of years later, we had to branch out and go into a storefront. Um, I have since been um, um, a principal of an alternative school. Actually, Jamila and I were uh, co-directors yes. of an alternative school. And I mm -hmm. must say, when I first stepped into the uh, alternative school arena, I thought those kids were going to eat me up. <laughs> Because I wasn't used to that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they are children. Mm -hmm. Even though they were, were, were uh, teenagers, many of them off the street, um, they still want the same thing that our kids wanted. They wanted love. Yeah. And they wanted direction. They wanted somebody to care about them. So, you know, my fears were unjustified. Indeed. Because... Two of two... We, our shared vision is that we saw a lot of things we did. going on in the school system yeah. that um, we felt were not serving our kids. And a Absolutely. lot of them because perhaps yeah. those who were serving them really didn't understand the needs of our children. And there's more so now. More so now. Most of the, more so now. A lot of the, the uh, teachers uh, that are in our schools right now they don't understand our kids. They really don't. They don't know our culture. 
-hmm. You know, they don't know that these children are highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that they want to learn. They really do. They don't understand that they know when you can't see them behind them. They don't, and, and they we, don't know our kids. Well, where we will always have worked from is from a position of love. And community. I, and community. I remember having some visitors come into the, one of the alternative schools I was at. And she asked me, she said, well, why are they calling you Mama Jamila? Mm -hmm. I said, because I treat them like they're my children, mm -hmm. first yes. of all. Yes. And I'm a very strict and stern parent. But each student here knows how much I really love them. That mm -hmm. comes from mm -hmm. our culture. That comes right. from our Eastern, our African, our Middle Eastern culture. Yeah. We are all their mothers. Right. The then, brothers are all their fathers. Right, and then our backgrounds, you know, we, we are pretty much in the same generation. And so we came out of a time when community was everything. We yes. had the Miss Shirley's, the Miss, Miss you know, Davis. And, and I know you remember the time where you can do something on one end of the block or even around the right. corner. Somebody said it and by the time you got home, right. maybe hours later, yeah. your mother knew, your yes, father exactly. knew. And so everybody on the block, what they had the ability to check you. Yeah, and then we, and then our teachers came out of the same community. Yes, right. you know, just like for us as educators, yeah. we were right there in the community yeah. with our children. So, mm -hmm. which gave us insights and inlays into who these kids really are. It, it was not uncommon to have your teacher sit two rows from you in, in church. church. Right. <laughs> Or stay in the next block. Or stay on or the next, next block. block. Or something, you know. So we, uh, there's a new thing in education now, collaboration. <laughs> and I use the word all the time because it's part of what I do. Oh, I use the word all the time. It's part of what I do at work mm -hmm. at Kennedy King College. But for us, the word collaboration is nothing new. It That's simply new. meant community. Thank you. Right? <laughs> Community. Community. Right. It's the same thing. When the we ran the Israel Academy, if there were a student who had a problem, a difficulty, um, since we all had that student, I had that student for reading and language arts, Jamila had the student for, for science, Aquila had the student for history or music, somebody else, the math teacher. So we would all figure out how, what makes that student tick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and see, Where is this problem coming from? And so we would collaborate, our community would collaborate and bring the parent in. Bring the parent in. Bring the parent in. And bring the community in. Bring the community in. Bring the, in. Right. Bring the bring janitor the community in. in. Bring the cook in. The businessman. This you is know. our our community. Right. So our we'd community. all figure out what to do for this one child having a problem. And, and it really worked. Collaboration, yeah. what we call it today, and, community, and it works. Michelle has mentioned, you know, Israel Academy. And Israel Academy perhaps is the prototype for, every, for the whole idea of homeschooling today and alternative um, schools, charter schools, because this was one of the first schools, and this was what, what year? Israel Academy. Well, it was on? after Ipe. Um, well, yeah, um, we did have Ipe. Ipe, Ipe, Ipe. Ipe um, the the administration. Oh, yeah, Shule Yawatoto. Shule Yawatoto. West Side. The the brother, brother Hannibal Afrique. Yeah, when yeah. I started, he and and follow me. Their school on the West Side was in full fledged, mm -hmm. and they were so wonderful. They allowed me to come there to observe, to yes. help. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then they came to my school also, to our school. Right. And then they were so wonderful. Yeah. They were family. They wanted the Israel Academy to work and to flourish. So they mentored me. And, and we wanted yeah. home school because we knew even then that the schools were not giving our children yeah. what we felt that they needed. Yeah. And we wanted more control over yes. where our children should be taught. And at Ipe, when every year we had a science fair, we brought all those small schools, together. all the children from those small schools together, and we had a science yeah. fair. It was just absolutely marvelous. Wasn't it, Jamie? And that's just a reminder that it, we have to live the model 
that they say it takes a village. Yes. So when we say that, we have to encompass what that really is. Yes. You have got to know the students. Mm -hmm. And in knowing the students, you have to know the parents. And in knowing the parents, the parents have to know the teachers. Mm -hmm. And the teachers have to be known by the administrators. Yes. It's one continual circle. Yes. And if the circle gets broken, then our children are broken, are broken. Which is what's happening now. And that's now. what's happening right now. Everybody's yeah. afraid of somebody. Yeah. The administrators are afraid of whoever's downtown. The teachers are afraid of the administrator. Right. And well, the students aren't afraid of anybody. Right. And then the idea of, com of community. Because remember, collaboration is relatively new on the educational forefront. It is. You know, so... The idea of community but not to was us. not to <laughs> us, but just overall in the whole educational process, community was not in on the table. Right. You know, it? somewhere along the way we mm -hmm. had it. Right. But mm -hmm. some long way along the way it got defragmentized. Lost. Yeah, it's got fragmentized. Fragmentized. And we want to de we want to we want to defragmentize it. You know. Yes. And so <laughs> that was the idea of our book. Yeah. Trust, yeah. and that's the acronym for time to rebuild understanding between students and teachers. Right. Okay, now what does that look like? What it looks like is it all becoming a community again, Understood. again, full circle. Full circle. Each person is a part of the puzzle. Yes. And if you don't have that piece, you have an incomplete puzzle. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore. The students are incomplete persons. Right. Yeah. And you can't blame the student for what we didn't do. What we did not do. And until we, our theories, you know, like, like uh, Michelle say, our, our lens, we have a number of theor theoretical lenses that we have drawn our conclusions, our decision making out of. Foremost, we use the whole child theory, mm -hmm. where, like Jamila said, it's going to take all of us to undo what has been put into play in terms of dealing with our children. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of the book, though it's for teachers in the classroom, it's also for teachers outside of the classroom, because we're all teachers. Yes. From the moment we birth our children, we become teachers. Yes. And we everyone in the community and becomes everyone a teacher. Is responsible. And that's what we've lost. Right. That's what we've lost. That's what we've right. lost. Because this child will either marry one of yours, or if not given the right direction, he may be the one breaking into your back door. Mm -hmm. So exactly. we have an obligation to these to our children, you know, and so we we identified our children as urban, 21st century, digital, digital natives, natives. And, and we have a responsibility to, to learn, to figure out what does it take, meet them where they are, and to come up with solutions on how to best serve them. Yes, because what's happening right now is there's this thing that we've all heard about, mass incarceration. Yes. Our young people are going into prisons in droves, in droves. males and females. In the alternative schools that we worked in, mm -hmm. it was very common for young people to come to school with, with an bracelets. ankle bracelet, ankle bracelet. having to be required by their probation officers to be in school and the probation officers would come into the yeah. schools and check from and, time to time right. and you know that needs to stop and, and remember research says what that our kids are being targeted as early as third, third, third grade, grade fourth grade third you know, grade and, and what building I building prisons what i see in, in in college right now there are 18 year olds being enrolled trying to enrolled in college and they don't have the appropriate uh, literacy skills right and now the federal government is cutting out all remedial all and remedial developmental programs. classes mm -hmm. did anybody know about that who saw that coming right. that means how many of our young people who are ill prepared by the public school systems that cannot read cannot think on a critical level how many of them will not be able to attend college? Right. 
-hmm. And it's not by happenstance. Right. It's by design. It's by design. design. Mm -hmm. So it is time for us as a community to take back the control of educating uh, our own. Yes. If this fails, we have no one to blame but, yes. ourselves. but ourselves. Yes. We are of the generation where when I meet young people that are in their 40s and their 30s, I start off by apologizing. Oh, yeah. I we, owe we, them the apology yeah. <laughs> because we, do. we, we fell short. Yes, yes we, did. we did. We dropped we the ball. Drop the ball mm -hmm. by wanting to have more than what our parents had. Yeah. Yeah. But in doing that, we forgot part Prepared of the children. preparation. Right. We did not prepare our students for not. the reality of the real world that they were getting ready to right. face. And when we when you when I apologize, they appreciate that. They, do. they really appreciate they do. that. I mean the hard the hardcore thug on the corner yes. appreciates right. that apology, and then he knows or she knows that we are in their corner. Yeah, we care, and so you know, and that really takes us into trust. Mm -hmm. You know, we uh, when we conceive the book, we have four components that really makes the gist of the book. One deals with social, emotional concerns. Mm -hmm. Another deal with emotional, internal concerns, project-based learning. And then how do we bring this all together to make this all work? How do we, what's the glue to make it all stick? Yeah. Now, April, um, who's uh, our quarter, the other one-fourth of the team, she uh, couldn't be here today, but she focuses on the teacher herself. And remember, the teacher is not just the teacher in the classroom, right? Exactly. Right. The teacher is the mother, the father. The mentor. The uh, first responder. Yes. You know, the... Anybody who anybody has contact who has with contact our youth. Anybody who has contact with our youth. Yes. And impact them in any kind of way. Yes. You are a teacher, and you have to see yourself as a facilitator right. in the development of, of, of this child. Mm -hmm. So with April, her component says that I have to look at myself. Who am I? Mm -hmm. And when I stand before this child, this student, what do I bring to the table? Yeah. What did this child see? Mm -hmm. And if this child sees somebody that stands before them that really doesn't love them, mm -hmm that really doesn't, is not concerned about their development, mm -hmm. that really don't understand who they are and are really not invested in them, then there's a breakdown, yeah. right? Yes, right. absolutely. There's a breakdown. Right. And everybody in the building, the village, has an active role. Has an active everybody. role. Everybody. The person who is cooking these children's food, has just as active. love has got to be in that food out of that yes. Yes. yes yes the person who is doing maintenance and repairing mm -hmm. things he's mm -hmm. got the you have care to about. act like this is your yes. house yes. Yeah. Yeah. and when you see children. a child that's yeah. out of line yeah. you have to be adult. able to check yeah. them you got to be able to lovingly talk. Yeah. right it has to be from a place of right. love lovingly so our first component emotional intelligence it says that i have to first look at self mm -hmm. and I have to be very clear on who self is so that I am assured that I can bring the necessary strategies to the exactly. table yes. that is going to empower yes. as we say empower mm -hmm. this child yes. and that's our first component our mm -hmm. next component is relationship building that's my component and so the relationship what we have found right? through the years, mm -hmm. if that child has a relationship with you, you can have a meeting out of your hands. It's, it's nothing he won't nothing do he for you. Nothing he or she won't do for you. He won't nothing that he won't nothing. do or won't give to you. Yes. You know, so it's it's imperative that we understand that relationships are so very important. It mm -hmm. really is the glue, and mm -hmm. it's the it's the element that you're going to find in yes. each and every component. Yeah. So relationships. The others won't work unless you have a, 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 an appropriate professional and loving 
relationship yeah, with you know, every single child. With every exactly. single child. As individuals. Right. And then with the teachers who work with you, mm -hmm. again, with the community. Yes. You know, yes. because the again, like Jamila mm -hmm. says, we can't do this if all of us are not willing participants yeah. in, the, in the safety, yeah. in the education, in the development, in mm -hmm. the cultivation of our yeah. children. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And then my component is Project Base. And the reason that I'm a passionate person about Project Base instructions or lessons or both is that you have to understand the student that you are trying to educate. Meet them where they we are. We all have different learning styles. Yes. yes. So if you don't understand my learning style, you can't reach me. You're right. Okay. You know, if I tell you I don't understand this, you have to really understand and accept I, I don't, don't understand, understand it. it. Right. So how do I reach you? Mm -hmm. Project Base allows you to reach that student where they're at, mm -hmm. to include them in the learning process, mm -hmm. allow them for teachable moments. It makes mm -hmm. education and relevant for them. them mm -hmm. in their own educational process. Yes. It has to be relevant to what their interest is. Mm -hmm. right? We can stick to the curriculum, but you have to figure out how to bring the student in. Mm -hmm. and, and don't just say to yeah. Jamila that with project-based learning, um, it gives them a longer time to process the information. Yes. Whereas currently, the, the children are not given enough time to process something before they'd have moved on to another skill and expected to um, develop. And our children just do not um, function in that manner, right? right. You, you've said that a number yes, of times. Yes, Project Base allows for the student to develop and enhance mm -hmm. and cultivate yeah. mm -hmm. their own learning process. It helps Solutions. them to develop yeah. their critical yeah. thinking, thinking skills. Yeah. This is what's going to carry them on it is. Yes, through it the is. rest of their life. Right. Yes, it is. Right. And what it also does, it allows the instructor to scaffold a sound structure and foundation mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. It allows the instructor to, 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 to take them from each level of Bloom's taxonomy from, 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 from the top from understanding, yeah, yeah. Um, remembering and comprehending facts all the way to the Application. top of that, that um, pyramid where they actually use these new skills to create mm -hmm. and synthesize right. and to understand in a, in a deeper level. Um, so and that then brings Michelle, us when to you. you. Say it brings us to your component. And my component is engaging students in, in Academic and educational strategies to help them um, teach and learn. Because mm -hmm. when a young manage. and manage. manage, when a young person is able to to teach another student, student then they understand that thing in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. But first of all, they've got to figure out what they're going to teach them, mm -hmm. and and how they're going to teach them. Mm -hmm. And it also uh, help, helps engaging students in active learning. So what strategies do we need to, 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 to uh, create or to research and to utilize mm -hmm. that would uh, bring all these things. All these components together. All these one. components together so that there is a balance. There is teaching going on and learning going on. I have, I'm sure you've, you've been in the classroom where there was a teacher teaching her butt off. <laughs> She was doing some really good teaching, and the children, but the, they were not responsible. They were not learning. They, were not they learning. weren't engaged. And they were not engaged. And they were not active. Right. They may have been quiet and listening even, right. but they were not learning. And so there has to be a balance. There has to be teaching going on and learning. And, and how do we know that that, that teacher is teaching those okay. students. And remember we're saying that teaching and learning are the same side, are two different sides of the same coin. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, because we, we're learning from our students, our students are learning from us. Yeah. And the idea... And learning from each other. The community, mm -hmm. uh, the old adage is that you pull out what is there. Yeah. Because everything that this child needs, is all he's already been equipped. Yes. And it's our job as facilitators 
is to, to help him to extrapolate what that is, exactly. yeah, to pull that out, and then how to frame it so it best fit his vision of, on his, uh, of where he sees himself mm -hmm. in life and how right. he wants to go. And, right. and present education doesn't do that. It doesn't. You know, they spend all their time trying to put into the mm -hmm. kid what they want or the student mm -hmm. instead right. of trying to find out what is already there and how do I help to cultivate that. Yes, and so, so what, and part of what I do is to make sure with the instructor or anybody who's working with our children mm -hmm. to help them with the strategies to make every minute, minute count. count. You know, and so uh, that is pretty much the gist of what trust is about, classroom management. And though it says classroom management, as we said before, it's much bigger than that. It is. It's, it's, it's the, we've, we've cast a very wide net with um, the publication and the production of this book because we're saying that we need the community. We need the businessman, the entrepreneur, we need you to understand who this, this student is exactly. so that you can best know how to serve him. What mm -hmm. is his needs? We need, of course, the parent because the first social unit is the parent. So how do you best serve? We have to become servants and perhaps one of our most important of all the um, leadership styles is transformational leadership. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to transform their way of thinking and the best way we can do that is to learn how to serve. How right. do we serve our students so that we can uh, bring out the best in them? And that's what trust classroom management is all about. Yeah. You know, it's a, like we said before, it's a compilation of our own, all of our experiences. We've all been educators, administrators, community activists, mothers, mm -hmm. name it. We've all been that. Mm -hmm. And so we're saying that this is not the only solution. It's but not it's a the viable solution, one. but it's a viable one. And it has worked for us. Yeah. And we know teachers are crying out. They need for help. support. For support. They yes. need someone to just take their hand. Yes. Give them a little time to breathe. Yes. It can't just be all the script that mm -hmm. we're given. Mm -hmm. Because some of these schools now, they have a script and you have to follow right. that script. You, have to follow you don't script. get to be creative. Very much so if a teacher can't be creative in what he's given to the student, mm -hmm. then the student's creativity is being stifled. Being stifled. A, a good example, yeah. one of my grandchildren, he's a sophomore this year, and he was telling me about his favorite teacher. His favorite teacher out of all his teachers, and he's in um, AP classes, you know, and he's saying his most favorite teacher was that teacher that, um, that gave him the assignment and allowed him to problem solve. Mm -hmm. Because having to follow their script, he couldn't do it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, because it took, for one, it took the zeal of learning away from him. Right. You know, because they wanted to decide what goes in. Mm -hmm. And how. And how it and should when. go in mm -hmm. and when mm -hmm. and what should come out. Yes. And that, and learning, which we know that that that's not what learning is about. No. You know, we have to find where he is, meet him where he's at, and then facilitate. Yeah. Which is greater than just educating, is yes. to, you know, it's, it's, it's an art form. How do we become artists with a pen and pencil and canvas in our hands and help this child create his world? You know, one of the things that I do every, um, four weeks in a 16 week semester, is I ask students, what is it that you need me to do yes. to make sure that you yes. are learning? That you are learning. And I give them time to write that out. Yes. I take it back to my office. I read every one of them. Mm -hmm. And they are so surprised when they see me using mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. of those things that they, they said that, right. they, that they wanted me to do for them. And it really works. Right. And then find out what they need. Know, Michelle has a good, uh, another uh, good point. We know that our children today are no longer traditional learners. 
Right. They didn't learn the way we learn. Mm -hmm. We know that our children are suffering from uh, illiteracy, uh, 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 no competency skills across across the board, and we see that. And if April Come were here, she would say they were malnourished. And yes. April would say a lot of it has to do <laughs> diet. with their diet. With diet. Mm, yes. You know, they're not being fed nourishing mm -hmm. food or not being fed at all when at they come all, to school. In some, right? in some cases. When they come to school, not at all. Yeah. You know? And so what we're saying is that um, with this child who is now called the digital native, mm -hmm. is that we can no longer teach them the way we were taught. You know, because yeah. that's, they're not that same kid, child anymore, you All know. Right. Amira has an excellent strategy where she uses the cell phones because, you oh, know, yeah. everybody doesn't necessarily Everybody's have, got a cell phone. And all the, school, cell phone. all the schools have the same complaint. It's not enough computer labs. The Some of infrastructure the, the uh, computers don't work. Yeah. And they have these elaborate systems for collecting these cell phones every morning. It, yeah. It's funny. And distributing them again yeah. in the, in the mm -hmm. evening. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. every single student, well, most of them anyway, they have an actual computer in their hands. Yes. So why don't we use these computers as a tool? As a tool. Do you, you already have a lab. You have a computer lab. Ask those kids how many. Ask everybody. Pull out your phone. And the ones that did not turn theirs in, got it past yeah. the, the front <laughs> desk, they got it tucked away somewhere. Pull those phones out. Yeah, you, I'm too. able to, to create a Word document on my phone. I can go, it, go into Google Doc. I can go into PowerPoint and create a slideshow. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can do research. Nobody has a dictionary anymore. Nobody's buying them. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a thesaurus. But guess what? They have a phone. Oh, they got a there phone. you go. Right. And I tell you this also, when I do not follow the rule, and forgive me, and make my students put those cell phones away, they respect that. Mm -hmm. They were like, you can make us, make us put our phone mm -hmm. away? I'm like, no, because it's, we're going to use that phone for academic purposes, purposes only. Yeah. And when I drill into them what academic purposes are mm -hmm. and somebody else pulls out a phone to do something else on social media the mm -hmm. other students will check them mm -hmm. I don't have to say anything and then I hope I hope my students aren't watching because I say if you are on social media or sending a text message I know you're doing it because there's a body language in mm -hmm. it <laughs> I can <laughs> tell <laughs> and then as a musician you know I we all understand the importance of music yes. in, in our strategies. Jamila had, uh, as a principal at one of the alternative schools, tell me about it, Jamila, well, with the I, music I would, the I would greet my students in the morning, and uh, one of the reasons for greeting them was to gauge where the students was at. Boy, that, so yeah, you could yeah. get a pulse of what your students are feeling like. Mm -hmm. So if, if I got five or ten kids coming in and they were agitated, then I found some music that was soothing yes. and calming that would change the whole vibration yes. mm -hmm. of the building. Mm -hmm. And then I did not change classes by that bell system. We changed with music. Yes. yes. With music. And the students yes. enjoyed it. They, they enjoyed embraced that. it. And they decided, you know, yeah. well, I'm going to bring this music for her so, exactly. you know, this, they, she could use this. <laughs> yeah for a certain length of time. Right. When we co-directed uh, at, at, at um, one of the schools, one of the schools, <laughs> I'm about to say the name, <laughs> we co-directed and it was just amazing to have those students bringing in music mm -hmm. and they knew which kind of music was going to be appropriate because some, one young man brought in the song and somebody else said, man, you know that they're not going to play that song. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know they're not going to play that? And one time I had a young man and he came in after a weekend, and he must have been on the corner doing his thing on the corner all weekend because he came in on Monday and he said, you know what, Miss um, Israel, I'm mad at you. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> I haven't seen you since Friday. 
because you were, you had me on the street and I was singing the song that you played for third uh, period and my boys was just looking at me. I'm like, you know what? It's because you have outgrown that corner. Okay. It's time for you to come out that corner and do something <laughs> else with your life now. And so you might, you know, ask well, why music, why technology? Mm -hmm. But this is who our children are today. That's who they are. Our children are governed by music. Our children yes. are governed by technology. Yes. Our children are governed by uh, uh, personal uh, uh, creativity. Yeah, by creativity. They you can know, create so, some things. So, as educators, we got to identify those 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 aspects yes. and teach out of that vernacular because that's who they are today. Exactly. That's who they are. Now, so the book again, we're pushing the book. And, and, and let, let, let us be clear that our greatest uh, desire, our greatest passion is the education of our children. If we don't educate our children, nobody then else can. nobody else can but us, number one. And number two, the idea of education is so that they can contribute back to, to society. society. And so they can. We want them productive. They're not, them many productive. of them are not being productive not now. Being productive. But you can get the book on Amazon.com. Yeah. Amazon just look on Amazon and you have to put in the acronym. If you, if you just put in trust without the acronym, likely to pull other up. stuff are going to come 20 up. 20 other books. Put the acronym in yeah. and it will come up. Right. Amazon.com. And, and, and we are passionate about our children. We're passionate about what we do. And we know that the responsibility, the responsibility and the only sort of responsibility falls on us, yes, on right. our generation. Exactly. You it know, does. because we in a way it really started yes, with us. And, and we take the responsibility that we dropped the ball. Yeah. So we're asking for community. You know, let us all feel that we have a responsibility to our children, you know. And that we can change things, and we can we can turn this around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the last alternative does not have to be the prison pipeline, or dropout. We have or to change whatever. that. Yes. We 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 can do that. And we are available to come to your school or your yes. church or your community center to conduct um, book workshops. book club workshops. Yeah. We can we can help you fix it. Family professional development. Professional development. Yes, yes. you know. So, um, thank you. Thank you. This has been a conversation on trust, classroom management, time to rebuild understanding between students and teachers, written by the four women of Urban EDU Coach and published by Wide View Publishing. Please go online at Amazon.com to purchase a copy of this book in either ebook or paperback format. Thank you so much. Bye for now.